Hey y'all, welcome back to Spirit of the Outdoors. Uh, today I'm down here by a persimmon tree, picking up some persimmons off the ground. Uh, ideally, if you're going to eat them, you want to make sure they're soft. Uh, these are very sweet. Uh, if you happen to get one that is not ripe, you will well know it. It'd be like Marcel Ledbetter and them, they... At the, the, they broke into church and replaced the Lord's Day wine with green persimmon wine, he said. And said the next Lord's Day, he said, everybody partook. And said they all had to stand and whistle a closing hymn. <laughs> It'll draw your mouth up, feel like you got cotton balls in your mouth if you get a green one. If you ain't never been into a green persimmon, that is an experience that you need to have in life before you go to the grave. But what I am doing is uh, I'm going to do a little folk tale weather forecasting for you today. Man, y'all, these things is good. Now, I don't need the skin right now because I ain't got no way to wash it. But I'm not going to use them. I may pick me a few more and eat them here in a minute. Mm. The problem you got with finding right ones is the raccoons and possums will beat you to them. But right here on this ground, let me show you. If you look right here, there is loads of these little seeds everywhere. These are going to be out of doo-doo, if you didn't know. So that's why you don't pick these up and be popping them in your mouth. Uh, they're, uh, but to see the seeds don't, they just kind of pass through an animal, so they just swallow them kind of whole where I spit the seeds out. Let me show you what we're going to do to forecast the weather. Now, I'm just going to go ahead and be flat honest with you. I didn't bring my tripod. Uh, I was kind of riding around just looking for some plants, and I really didn't bring a knife to do this with, but I just decided all of a sudden that I would make this video. I really don't know that there's a lot of people do it. I did see uh, a friend of mine... Um, do this the other day on his Facebook. You got to split this seed. So, and I ain't going to sit here and tell you I know the best way to split it. I just do things the best way I know how. Uh, it does have a skin on this one. Some of them that has done come off of. It's easier if you get that off. Be careful. Don't cut your finger up doing this. Mm. You need to get where that seed is separated or where there is a seam. And basically what you're wanting to do is cut it half in two, okay? I'm not going to portray that this is easy. But I promise you, we're going to make it happen. I'm sure there's somebody watching this saying, I'll tell you how to do that. I'll tell you how to split that open better. <laughs> no, you won't either because I'm doing it. You can't talk to me. <laughs> I'll be done with it by the time you see this. All right. Oh, yeah, that's very, very clear. All right, I'm going to get the camera and show you what I'm... Uh, I'm going to lay it on this knife blade where you can really see. Okay. You see right here, you see that the inside of that seed, it looks like a shovel. That's supposed to mean that you're going to be shoveling snow, and you see how well pronounced it is. If that is somewhat blurry, it's not going to be as bad a winter. Uh, sometimes there'll be a fork in there, and that means it's going to be warmer. Sometimes it looks more like a knife, but this is very clearly looks like a spoon or a shovel, which indicates you're going to shovel snow. So, y'all, you take these persimmon seeds, and this is how you tell if it's going to be a, a cold winter or not. So I had seen the other day my friend Randall Ross had done this on uh, his Facebook and I think he watches this channel. I'm, I'm pretty sure he does. Uh, 
so anyway, I have done this before, and last year when I done it, they wouldn't really pronounce. So we wound up having some fairly cold winter here in Mississippi. It's not that bad. So I'm curious, the reason I'm doing this is, is how this looks throughout the country, because in other areas, it could be different. So here in central Mississippi, uh, we've, we've got very clearly a, uh, a good snow shovel, and, and hard as these things are to cut in too. I was gonna do several of them so we could get an overall view. That one that I did, I, it, it was turned sideways is what the deal was. That in there is clearly a shovel. I cut part of the stem off. Let me show you though. You can see that is clearly a shovel. That's the one that I just cut right there. It is clearly a shovel. Well, let me get my knife put up. But I just wanted to show y'all some of that. Oh, I know there's a lot of people that don't know nothing about that. And I know I know a lot of you old timers know more about it than I do. Oh, but now this persimmon tree, I, I was kind of kind of looking to find me some persimmons but the and they are a few laying around here but they so sticky and whatnot oh i'm i'm looking for some medicinal plants just scouting around to see i hadn't really harvested anything just to see what i can find i got my chainsaw i may cut me up a few down limbs i'm just kind of out piddling around it's hot this evening we went and picked up a uh a half a steer that was processed and we split the half me and my parents my, my dad we split it between our families and put them in the freezer uh got a pretty good deal on it so we prepared for winter y'all you never know what's coming our way uh i'm bracing for hard times hoping it don't really get that hard we might get away scot-free i hope so but i'm trying to be prepared but i'm just out looking around Got through cutting some grass, me and Brody did, so I'm peppering and I'm gonna cook me some squirrels that was in the freezer. I had to get some stuff out of my freezer. Uh, and squirrel season ain't opened up for us down here. So anyway, I got some that was frozen. I'm gonna cook them. We made video cooking them. I don't know what I'm gonna do yet, but uh Y'all, I've just found one of the plants that I was looking for. Uh, you see under here, how these leaves are real white. This is rabbit tobacco. And it's starting to flower out. We don't have a huge abundance of this here, but there's one here, there's one over there. You see another one back there. And I'm sure now that I've got a good ID on it and have found it, that I'll start seeing it in several more places. This flowering top right here will help me identify that and get it focused where you can see it. There we go. So I, I found a couple of things here and I really want to show y'all the second one I found because I promise you in all your life, you've never found nothing like this. I, I guarantee you not out in the woods. Y'all, I found an ax. Look at this job here. I want you to get a good look at this. Now that, that was a craftsman that done that. I guarantee you. <laughs> so I am going to take this. I mean, I can't leave this rubbish out in the, in the woods anyway. Uh, but I'm going to take it and take a torch and cut some of that junk loose. We, I may throw this in the forge see if I can salvage it. I'm sure it's a China-made head. I don't know that. It may be a plum or something. I don't see a name on it nowhere. Uh, it's just a rusty old axe head. <laughs> you ain't never found nothing like that in the woods, have you? Not that ugly. You might have found an axe in the woods, but you ain't found that. <laughs> I'm going to look around see if I can find me some more rabbit tobacco. If that's the only two plants right here, I'm probably going to leave them because I do have a little bit at the house. But now that I can identify it, if I find some more, I'm probably going to take me a handful at home with me. I'll let you know here directly. Here is another little patch of it. You see that's already drying up, so I'm definitely going to get that. Uh, it's dried already, a little brown, but I can make use of it. 
Okay, I had to come back and uh, I wanted to read a little bit about this rabbit tobacco. I have never covered rabbit tobacco, y'all. And I showed it to you out there in the field, but I harvested it. I'm going to hang it upside down. I need to get the grass out of it. Oh, it's still dirty, but that's all right. Um, I also, I got me some good, more goldenrod. This is the Altissima. It blooms a little later. Um, and this is a Lobelia. And I'm not sure exactly. This is a purple Lobelia. I found it. I've got to do a little more research on it. So we're not going to talk about that. Uh, this is just the top side of some goldenrod that wasn't quite blooming. I wanted it this way just for a, to make some tea out of and stuff. So I'm going to hang that up separately and dry it. I also picked me some more cardinal flower. Let me show that to you right quick. I have covered cardinal flower. This is Lobelia cardinalis. Uh, these I picked the other day. The blooms are already. You'll notice the underside of these leaves when it matures has a reddish tint. And I don't know if you can see if I get in the light. But over right here, you can tell. Uh, they have a reddish kind of tint to them. Uh, but single stem, they get very large, bright red flowers like this. This is Lobelia cardinalis. This is a great anti-anxiety, mild pain reliever. I use it just to kind of relieve stress such as that. But the one we're going to talk about is this one here, and this is the rabbit tobacco. Uh, and I had to go back to some old books, y'all. Uh, when you look it up, it's like Pseudonagfalium obtusifolium. In the old books, the only way I have found this is simply Nagfalium obtusifolium, which is cudweed, catfoot, life everlasting, sweet everlasting, silver leaf, rabbit tobacco, cottonweed, uh, and fragrant, uh, the, one of the other books named it as fragrant something. It wasn't this, and it was one of the other, uh, maybe a website I was looking at. Um, now, I wanted to tell you that my best location of finding it, now it's kind of sparse here in Mississippi for whatever reason. It used to grow like abundantly from what I hear. Um, but now it's around pine trees, pine thickets along the edges of them where there's some trail, and it's growing up around the edges of these pine trees. That is where I have found it. Um... Cudweed is a member of the daisy family of wide distribution and usually rated to have healing qualities. In India and China, it is another species as regarded anti-malarial. Reputedly, it can drive away moths and other insects. In Mexico and France, several species are mentioned as valuable bronchitis and other conditions. We hear from Culpeper that Pliny saith the juice of the herb taken in wine and milk is a sovereign remedy against the mumps and quinsy. Whosoever, sh whosoever shall so take it shall never be troubled with that disease again. And in the name cudweed comes from an old statement that the plant when fed to cattle will help restore the ruminating faculty. Okay, I don't know about that. Some of you cattle guys may know that. Y'all, I'm a believer in using plant medicine with animals. Uh, if it works for humans, it works for animals. I have used plantain with chickens. I'm sure any of this other stuff can work with animals as well. Uh, a more reputable source for the value of Nagfolium notes that it contains a volatile oil and a bitter principle with tannin and other constituents that is used in domestic medicines for pulmonary and intestinal catarrh and for diarrhea, and locally as a fermentation for bruises. He also mentions that similar values may be found in purely everlasting Anaphilus margaticia. I wasn't ready for that word. But anyway, that is that. Let us, let us go to... This book here, now that, y'all, what I was reading out of right there is that book. 
and I just lost some of my papers out of it, which don't really matter. Okay, lay that to the side. Now we're going to read out of American Medicinal Plants by Charles F. Millspaw. Uh, I'm going to do look at this, and I photo them, description, history, habitat, uh, parts used, and preputation. Let's read the history and habitat. Now, y'all, this may be lengthy. I'll edit out whatever it's born. This species is indigenous to the North America, where it ranges from Florida and Texas northward to Canada and Wisconsin. It grows upon fields and in quite open dry woods and blossoms from July to October. Everlastings formed a part of Aboriginal medicine, and from there they descended to the white settlers, who in conjunction with more or less botanic physicians, use them about as follows. The herb as a mascatory has always been popular remedy on account of its astringent properties in ulceration of the mouth and falses and for quinsy. A hot decoction proves pectoral and somewhat anodyne as well as pseudorphic in early stages of fevers. A cold infusion has been used much in diarrhea, dysentery, hemorrhage of the bowels, and is somewhat vermifugal. It is also recommended in Leuorchia. The fresh juice is considered anti-venereal. Hot fomentations of the herb have been used like arnica for sprains and bruises and from a good vulnerary and painful tumors and unhealthy ulcers. The dried flowers are recommended as quieting filling for the pillows and consumptives. So they use it for different other stuff. It says parts used in preparation. This is one that a lot of people like to hear. Uh, some of you may not be interested, but kind of how they did it. The whole fresh plant gathered when the flowers are still young, which is like what I just did, should be treated as directed for the root of the enula whatever that is. The resulting tincture should have a brownish orange color and transmitting light, a pleasant, slight balsamic odor, a taste of first aromatic, then bitter, and an acid reaction. No analysis to determine the character or the bitter principle has been made. The herb contains a little resin of volatile oil a bitter principle in tannin that yields all sensible qualities in both water and alcohol. Uh, the psychophysiological action, the symptoms following the indigestion from 15 drops to a half ounce of the tincture at the hands of Dr. Woodbury were essentially as follows. Slight abdominal griping, vomiting, and Purging, profuse diarrhea, dark colored offensive passages, experiments with small doses of the trinated dry flowers and leaves at the hands of Dr. Banks, corroborated the above symptoms. Through the result was less severe and gave the following symptoms besides giddiness, especially on rising dull, heavy expression of countenance, diminished appetite, rumbling of flatus, increased urine, sexual excitement, intense sciatic pain, weakness, and languor. So you, you kind of get an idea of what this kind of, what they use it for. Um, I will say this, I did not find this in the Southeast Medicinal Plants. I did not find it in the Lost Book of Herbal Remedies. Uh, I looked in my North American Indian Herbology. I did not find it in there. This is the only two places I found it. I would recommend you look up either pseudonagfolium or just nagfolium obtusifolium and uh, look online, get some good research, but don't just read from one source. Uh, but now I'll tell you what I've done with it. Mike Reed sent me some of this plant and uh, Mike Reed covers it, talks a little about it in some of his videos. I would suggest you go over and check that out. Um, but he sent me of some of the plant, the first that I have, and I just labeled it as rabbit tobacco. Uh, it has a 
very good fragrance. I just like it as a tea. It's good for colds, good for such as that, stopped up sinuses and all. So what I was doing was mixing it with goldenrod as I drank it. Uh, so, but you see this, there's a lot of flowers and stuff in it. Uh, that's what Mike sent me. So this is not as bloomed out. He picked this a lot later in the fall than I did. So you can pick this throughout the year. Uh, but anyway, I just wanted to cover, I knew I hadn't covered some of these plants and this was one, y'all, it has a really good sweet flavor and smell to it and aroma. So, I, you know, it was one of the plants that I was looking for to have as a tea this fall. So anyway, thank y'all for watching Spirit of the Outdoors. We'll see you next time. Remember the best way to do things is the way you like to do it. We'll see y'all.